nice haircut. I got a haircut. Yeah. It's not easy getting haircuts sometimes. Yeah, because... I often don't feel like they get it. <laughs> Though this is a good cut. Our, our, our gentleman gave me a very good cut. He did. It looks really good on you. And he's always done a really good job. Yeah. But it's oftentimes I'll go to a place if I'm not with the person who I feel comfortable with, like the people that I've used that, I'm, that I like, but mm -hmm. I'm like I'm traveling or they're out of town. Often they're out of town, like the guys that are the, the haircutters that I like that are good. They travel. They travel because working. They're, yeah, because they're successful and they're good at their job. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so when I've like tried other places, I'm shocked at how absolutely stupid and ridiculous the well, haircut is. Okay. Yes, but you also decide to get your haircut when we're on like vacation in obscure places. <laughs> really? Yeah. No. Even here in Austonian, when our guy that we like is out of town, was out of town, and I went to a salon, and I was like, who's your best hair cutter for like men's hair? And my hair is like wavy and, you know, like it's, it's not like straight hair that's easy to just give a basic, like it changes all the time based off of humidity and the barometer and, uh, and how many carbs I've had. Like, you know, it's like it changes. <laughs> And they're like, oh, well, uh, and they said who the haircutter was. I can't remember the name. Sally. Probably best not to mention it here. Sally or Denise, whoever it was. And Phyllis. Phyllis. And they're like, oh, Phyllis is really good with hair, with men's hair. I was like, okay, great. Let me have Phyllis. And Phyllis was like pretty hip. She was very sweet. And she gave me just a jackass haircut. Oh. Like it was jackass. And was so, it like some parts like this and other parts do, like this? Do you remember the, and... the back? She, I kept saying, you got to really get into the back. It's very thick back there and it just pops up. And she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, okay, you really got to get in there. And then somehow the whole pop thing just popped up. <laughs> I left and it was like a reverse kind of mullet where everything just popped up back there in the front, which it's, you know, it's not as thick as it was when I was a young man. So there's a little less here and it was popping up back there. And then I think you were like, wow, that's fucked. That's really bad. So like I went back in there like within a day, mm -hmm. maybe two days. I was like, hey, my wife thought maybe you could like, we could just fix a couple things. And I like put it off on me. I was like, it's me. Like I didn't describe it well. I'm a guy. I get confused. I'm easily flustered. It's all me. And Phyllis was very sweet. And she's like, sure. And, and somehow they charged you the same rate? Somehow. <sighs> did she charge me again? I think she charged you again. Yeah. And then somehow fucked it up even worse. And so I was like, oh, wow. So then I didn't get a haircut for a while. Because uh -huh. I was like, I, I don't know what to do here in Austin until, uh -huh. until the guy we like is back in town, which is going to be a while. So I just went with like really bushy hair for like a really long time. Didn't do a podcast for a while. May have been one of the reasons I didn't do a podcast. <laughs> just subconsciously, you were not reaching for the podcast. Right. You just didn't feel right about your hair. I, yeah. I understand. When, when my hair's wrong, like, like on jobs, yeah. when I'm filming. Yeah. Um, not Fear the Walking Dead because that's just apocalypse, you know, simplicity. Yeah. But <clears throat> like on other shows I've done where I wanted pretty hair and like had, you know, you want to look good. Yeah. Um, if the person wasn't good at like getting what I wanted to do with my hair and like did altered versions of it, I, I felt like a cat with the whiskers cut off. Yeah. Like I, 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 I would get cranky and, uh, <laughs> not pleasurable to work alongside and yeah. feel like my whole day would get thrown when off. When your hair is off, your chi... I am. L like, really. your analogy was perfect. Like a cat with its whiskers cut off. When I was a little kid, I cut my kitten's whiskers off, right? I didn't know. And my cat was like, at the, it was like at the ground where it was like, <laughs> like I couldn't do anything. My mom came home and was like, no, no, you're not supposed to do that. Oh, Jesus, Bodie. Like, that's how they, that's how they know. It's like their eyes. It's how they know what's happening. My cats are like... <laughs> <laughs> like it, it was like walking it couldn't they do like walk into walls and yeah like, they, it's, they look like they are have no like their inner ear is fucked up or something like that's how they walk he, he would walk like an aardvark his face uh -huh. would, would not leave the ground it was like he was just like snooping its face along the ground like an aardvark so is that and, an anteater you mean or an aardvark or an anteater the one that's always got the, the same thing face along the, the ground difference. they look very similar maybe yeah. one just eats ants <laughs> but so when your hair like all girls are like, you know, oh, I wish that I looked better in this blouse and that, or I wish my hair was better or whatever. 
but you're pretty tough. You're pretty resilient. But when your hair is not, I can't. Oh function. boy. Oh boy. I can, and not only can I not function, but everyone around me's life will. They'll have a bad day because I am a nightmare to be around. Dude, I get it. It's it's when your hair is off. When you not just <sighs> off, but I mean like fucked up. Yeah, fucked. <laughs> when when <laughs> I was a boy, my hipster mom in Hollywood took me to a super hip haircutter named Attila. And this was like 1982 uh-huh. in Hollywood. And Attila owned a salon on a on a, a part of Hollywood called Melrose. Which if anyone lives in LA, it's sort of like, well, it's, it's not quite as... It's changed over the years. It's changed over the years, but it used to be the hipster central of, of the alternative scene in Hollywood. Yeah. And Attila had a salon in Melrose. And he had a, like a... Like a colorful rainbow mohawk. You know, like a mohawk with all the rainbow colors? Yeah. And I was like, oh, God. Now, I, my mom was very alternative. She was like a cutting edge. Uh, you know, she was interested in fashion. And yeah, I, she was in the, like, punky art scene in my, Hollywood. My mom was like a, yeah, sort of a punky. Which is cool, but it wasn't you. Oh, completely cool. And I was sort of stuck in the Hispanic culture of my friends, which was like baggy jeans and kind of messy surfer hair and and hoodies and like it was you just looked like a broke surfer which I wasn't but that's the look that the the southern california youth had yeah so i didn't want to be alternative and punk rock which now i like is i'd much rather you get the point. You admire it. You get so, it. You just Attila, didn't at the time. And it's your mom, which by default you have to protest and resist because that's the way life works. I wanted my hair kind of like like a greaser. Like uh-huh. kind of like I w- and he gave me like a hipster cut. I don't he it was like maybe like a slight flock of seagulls vibe uh-huh. on it or something. Uh-huh. Where it was kind of like share with like a fur. Uh-huh. Right? And <laughs> and I and I this is 1982. <laughs> And I remember crying hysterically in the chair as he like wheels me around to show it to me. I couldn't stop crying. And he and he was uh, either British or German. I can't remember. I want to think Attila was German. Sounds maybe, more like a German name. Than because a... I don't think it was his real name. So I think you're right. Oh, I see. Maybe it was. I mean, I, do, maybe like did people name their kids Attila? <laughs> I'd have to Google. <laughs> he may be well known. He may be like like a well known Hollywood haircutter from the eighties, Attila. So uh, Attila's like, oh, I think it's, I think you're gonna be okay. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna be okay about this. <laughs> and I just cried. And my mom didn't know what to do because it was for her. It was like a really big deal to get into the Attila, and she used all of her hipster connections to get in there. And then Attila fucked my hair up so bad, and. I remember like like a cat with its whiskers cut off. Like yeah. I just didn't want to be seen for a while. My mom took me to... Okay, my mom had a hairstylist. Oh my God, this is amazing that I just... I have the perfect analogy. Okay, so we all know Bob Ross, right? The artist. Oh yeah, of course. He had Bob Ross hair. Yeah, the best. Okay, and he was like the Warren Beatty of the hair salon. Okay, <laughs> he was like, had his own space in the back room. And yeah. it was all like the wood paneling where the theme of the salon kind of looked like a saloon. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that was like, cool. who did her hair? Was this in the valley? Oh, yes. Deep valley. Like, the val- LA- down Balboa. LA Valley. Like, yeah. This is like, va- this the- is like North Valley. Okay, North Valley. Oh my God. Nah, nah, nah. North Valley. And, uh, and so she took me, I don't know if we've ever mentioned this on a podcast before, but anyway, uh, she sat me down. Now he didn't have a mirror in front. Either he took it down because <laughs> I was sitting down or my mom said to take it down or he just didn't have one because the ladies just had to trust him. Um, right. but he had, he literally dressed like Bob Ross with like the pants and the little belt and the button up sh- silk shirt and the, 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 fro. the perm, the perm, fro. um, yeah, the perm that's been like, yeah, brushed out. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and the kind of like tight polyester pants. Was there a little slightly faded ball region where the ball has slightly fade? The balls <laughs> have slightly faded, like every Led Zeppelin yeah. picture ever taken, where somehow the testicles no, it, we, make the Levi's fade in that spot, no, which I don't that's understand. Ge- that's in the jeans. These were polyester, okay. which had more of a flat front okay. to the guy. Which we do need to come back later in another podcast about why the balls And why were it- men so skinny in the 70s? That's what I want to know. Oh, well, it was a better diet. I mean, even yeah, but it was a particular like physical aesthetic where they were all skinny. I honestly so don't what think was they ate the that, di- that was that just? I bet you're gonna find Jack a Jack Lalanne. Everyone was doing Jack Lalanne. You're gonna get a lot of comments that says uh, starving and heroin. 
Yeah, but for the people who didn't do that, what was it? Because the men were all skinny. Men were all skinny. Same so he was really thin, too. I think it's diet. Same in, when you look at pictures of soldiers in World War II, our American soldiers that were very fit and in shape, they didn't eat the shit that we eat now. They just, there wasn't process. Yeah, they were very active. Now we're all just sitting around looking at our phones. <laughs> they were like, we're, anyway. we're, we're off topic. Tell uh, me we about, are tell me, skewed off to the left. Bob so Ross far. in the Valley. So Bob Ross is cutting my hair and he's all very trim. And um, Then it ended up being, um, it was really bad. So my mom had told him, because I was doing gymnastics at the time. So my mom wanted me to have a haircut that when I would do my round off back handspring, <laughs> you know, do my tumbling in gymnastics. And when I would land, it would just land right back. Uh, I remember, and not in my eyes. I so remember a school picture or thing because yeah. you did a. It was a mullet. Yeah, but it was a. It was like the the ice skater girl. What was her name? It was well. It was a. It was a. It was the ice skater from the seventies. Yes, I know. It was a. It was a hybrid between a Dorothy Hamill hair. Dorothy Hamill. And you had a Dorothy Hamill. Yeah, and uh, but with a little bit more mullety. It wasn't a perfect Dorothy. You had Hamill. a Dorothy mullet. <laughs> And it was like the last haircut I would ever ask for. Yeah. If someone had asked me what I wanted for my hair. Yeah. I was really into like Pippi Longstocking and my mom wouldn't even let me watch Pippi Longstocking because she didn't want me to get any ideas in my head. Yeah. Because <laughs> About like what? Having a opinionated kid who... God forbid you should run away with a monkey on a pirate ship or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> I really related to Pippi Longstocking and I got really mad at my mom for like cutting my um you know affection for pippy yeah like she would like not let me reach and enjoy pippy like she like, wouldn't let me watch pippy longstocking but i'd yeah. see the ads come on tv and i'd get so excited because i felt like that's me yeah i felt like i was on tv in pippy life felt represented so you wanted a pippy cut and you got a dorothy hamill i just mullet. wanted to be able to have hair to do yeah. what i wanted you can't do shit with a dorothy hamill haircut that's right which my mom liked because there wasn't, wasn't anything to style for school and everything just landed also, right back. When you stick your landing, everything is ready to go. Yeah, it's just right back. It's, it's just like a, you stick the perfect haircut. You stick your landing and picture like just snap. Yeah, and nothing's askew. Go. Your mom is fine. Yeah, I yeah. don't know that side of your mom. I have no relationship with your mom, who I've now known for thirty-one you have years. Have a relationship with my mom for that side of her. Oh. I have no relationship with your mom for that when side of right her. When her right eyebrow goes up, that relationship. All I ever get is the. Is that's where it ends with her? She's. I don't have a side of her. You that's, never got to the right eyebrow. No. You never got engaged with her in any way that got her right eyebrow to and, poke up. And you also never got the insanity of my mom, where the she thought the world was against her, and she was. Well, the world was against her. She. Well, the world was against her, but not really. You don't have a leg to stand on because you're just like a teenage boy. I got two legs to stand on. Protesting to. what and, your mom had to go through. And and now you get to walk around. With cat shit in your hair for days at a time. Okay, me. so I'm growing my hair. My hair's long now, so it gets in the way. You guys are okay with Jenna having cat shit in her hair? Because Jenna was it's okay with cat it. It's not cat shit. It's musk. <laughs> <laughs> it's pheromone, pheromone musk. Okay, especially this morning, hey, tell too. Me, tell he, me about the cat shit in your hair okay, for two days. Our adopted kitty who came with the name Norman, so you liked it and kept it. I like the name Norman, so I kept his adopted name. Okay, so Norman, like, is in love with me or I'm something. I'm going to cut to a picture of Norman at this point in the podcast. <laughs> now that I'm doing my own homemaking editing on this. <laughs> and Norman, like, gets all up in my business mm -hmm. and then starts releasing odors on me. He's pheromoning you. He pheromones me. and He and musks then, you. And then he finds the smell and then starts licking it. Like, on my arm. So what was he'll the... sit. And so then he somehow... Okay, but this is before I knew what he was doing. Yeah. So it was like the first time it happened. And I was like, what the fuck is that smell? It <laughs> and to be clear, like not he's not shit. spraying. To be clear, no, he didn't not spray. Cat spray. It's not cat spray, which we've all known the horribleness of that. It's like his his it's like neck else. his neck gland. Yeah, but musk. it feels like it's coming out of his lower region. Well, that's a little different, sweetheart. But it's not shit. It's not coming from his butt. Well, is he but ejaculating in me? <laughs> No, I, I honestly am in a mystery because I, he's not ejaculating. He's <laughs> You said lower region. I'm like, what is this well, cat doing to you? Well, there's some gaseous something. Gaseous? That's the anus. No, it's because it's not poop. But it was in my... I was like, what the hell? It smells like Norman needs to clean himself and it's in my hair. You said it was like... The way you described it was like it smells like a, like a, like a cat butt or something. Like, yeah, it's like butt, but like it, days uh, later... <laughs> <laughs> but not poopy it's like it's like a little bit of like an old anus but not not fresh <laughs> anus 
So it's like a slightly, it's like a slightly, your hair, your hair smells like a slightly dated anus. But it wasn't. Not, not like a fresh but it's anus. it's the ceremony thing. It's musky. It's musk. Okay. If you were a female cat, you'd be like, it's the best smelling thing in the world. But I was as like, a human, he's into me. Yeah. But as a human, you were like, this is slightly old anus. Yeah. <laughs> but it was in my hair. Three days. And you didn't but want But I had it. just had my hair blown out. So you didn't want to wash it. I was I like. I didn't want to wash it. So you came and told me. I was like, well, go fucking wash your hair immediately. If you have cat shit in your hair. I was like, but I just got my hair blown and out. And so she went for two days kind of like. <laughs> and then, but wouldn't wash it. <laughs> I tried to take an alcohol wipe just to that little section. <laughs> you did, and that that was it didn't really work. That though. didn't work. And so uh-huh. you, you you I had to wait for the pheromones just to evaporate out of my hair. <laughs> That's how much I care about my blowout. When you get your blowout, there's no stop. You cat shit in your hair, cat ejaculate in your hair. Nothing's <laughs> gonna stop you once you get your blowout because the hair is in a good place. Yeah, and I just I drove far to get my hair blown out. And... I get it. You got your hair blown out. It's not even the grammar, and but you know what I'm saying. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what's going on. Got my hairstyle. Yeah. <laughs> You're a tough cookie. And once the blowout occurs, it doesn't matter what's going on with it, with the smell. I tried to smell it, but I couldn't. I don't know what it is with me with Norman. Oh, yeah. He's got My you thing is, like, when we drove him home that yeah. day, like the first time when we got him, yeah. I held him because he was not going in the, in the bag. Right, right. Right. We tried the bag and he had, like, a psychotic. He's like, ah, ah, ah. Yeah, he had a breakdown, and I was like, okay, well, I don't want to traumatize you. Right. Um, so I thought, okay, well, I'll try holding him in my arms, and if he stays calm, then that's fine. Yeah. So I just kept my arms around him, kept him up in you, my, you, my neck. I mommy, I mommied him. He imprinted. He really did. He imprinted on you, and now he's in like a like some Oedipus complex. He, yes, where it's he like is. He's your, like, it's mother, 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 my sexual wife. partner. He doesn't know where you stand with him, so yeah. he's like, you're my wife, you're my... You're my, my Mommy. My girl. It's weird. Yeah, so he just kind of gets, you get up in the morning, he's like. <sighs> yeah, and it's like sometimes he'll like, lay on me and purr. Yeah. And that was like last night. Yeah. I think I posted on my Insta stories. He was just snuggling with me and there was no pheromone scent. <laughs> it was just an evening snuggle. The mornings. Yeah. It's like he's like wakes up with a boner. He wakes up with, with a cat you know? boner and he's, he's all yeah, like ready he's to like go. A, because the way he climbed up on my chest had this like it, prowl on it. it. Like it had that, he got like, up there with like a lot of intention. Like a like, guy crossing the club that's had a little too much to drink and he sees the girl and he's like, yeah. Yeah, like one time I was in a club when I was 19 because you could, it was this one bar in Hollywood, this nightclub that you could dance. They had a DJ and uh, yeah. And this guy walked up to me. He yeah. was like 6'4". And he would just walk straight up to me and grab my boob and just had his hand on my boob. I was 19 years old mm. and I... I Jesus had Christ. none of it. And that was what Norm. That's what Norman. That's does. what Norman does. Except I didn't punch Norman across the face like I did to the guy in the bar because he's my cat. Right. Yeah. Instead, not gonna punch my in- cat. Instead, you're just like Norman. Get off. <laughs> you're you're doing something. No, I was weird. like, oh hi, buddy. He's funny with you. With the with me and the boys, he's like kind of says like, hey, hi, man, what's up? bats bats our feet around. Yeah, gives he us a does like a bra. What's up? Yeah, what's up? But he was like, baby, what's going on? Yeah. No, he really he did like. A heavy intention to climb on. Yeah, it probably all started... And then I got pheromoned. It all started when he pheromone ejaculated you. <laughs> Cat ejaculate. And then from there on out, it's been a little bit like you're his possession. But is there like a some kind of gaseous musk that comes from his penis it, area? No. Well, hang on now. Let's just slow this down. This I need is, to talk to the vet. There is <laughs> musk from scent glands in their neck. And I guess you could say it's gaseous in that it can off-gas... But you're talking about the penis area, which no. This is a little That's bit just pee or ejaculate yeah. or spray. Okay, but you say the pheromone thing, I pheromone. thought it was only something that they could smell. And like other he, and he females. rubs like up against me and he does that whole nose thing yeah. with me. There's no scent up in my face. It's He's, when he turns and it's like when he turns it puts on. his seat, his tush. Oh, his tush. Yeah, because look, he'll sit with his well, tush honey, on my the, hair. Honey, that's the anus. You're smelling his anus. You're smelling cat <laughs> anus. We got a differentiation between when him pheromoning you with his musk glands because it on his neck. Doesn't smell like butthole. Well, first this of all, this is heavy for, feline butthole analytics. First going off, on right now. First off, we can both agree that neither of us really know what anyone else's butthole smells like anyway. No, and I just think it's funny if anyone is even still listening to this podcast. <laughs> Because See, why would anyone? <laughs> why would anyone go past the point about eight minutes ago? Where 
<laughs> cat ejaculate came out of my mouth. That there's anyone still listening. I know, we're this still this is still interesting to you and I. And that is my cat shitting on you or ejaculating on you? Or what is the difference between a cat ass smell and a human ass smell? And <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god. god we need to get a life oh, seriously no. you know what's funny is on our last podcast uh which was the shop vac uh, uh thing which oh, i'll I which read I'll, the comments I, I, I read every comment who won me you hands down and they're full of shit they're just taking your side boop, boop. because it's ridiculous everyone okay. hands down you slaughtered me and there's just no way that's just oh, you're it, still holding your ground on that. It's not even holding the ground. It's just people because everyone always takes your side as they should. You're cuter than me. You're more charming than me. You're Jenna, and you just have that way about you. And everyone should always take your side. Okay. But I should. No one's gonna fucking blow the leaves out of the garage or the shop back. Everyone's out of their fucking mind. But when you don't blow it, that's the point. You suck it. Sucking Jingle. it, sucking <laughs> it, or blowing it. Either way, it's such a stupid hassle when you have a blower. But the best part was there was a comment. Which said, um, uh, these are privileged people's problems. There's real issues out there. And I, I thought it was hilarious. I deleted their comment because they're a fuckwad. Well, but here's the best there's part. bigger problems out there. But, but I wanted to comment on that, which I shouldn't, but I am because it makes me laugh. Which okay. is that, you know, first off, I saw more before I was 13 than most people have seen in their fucking life. And this isn't a podcast where we're talking about... What's wrong in the world? Yeah, because you can just fucking go on Twitter and Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. All they want to do... And the news. And the news. All they want you to know about is everything that's fucked in the world. So to anyone that's made it this far into this particular podcast, (laughs) if anyone has made it this far, to just give a disclaimer, sometimes if it's organic for us, we may talk about a serious issue. But for the most part, you get way more of that than you need. And this is just us having fun. Because we've been together 31 fucking years and the idea of marriage is funny to us and we still make each other laugh and we have a lot of people that enjoy getting off on our laughs and get their own laughs out of it and have their own relationships come to light, the humor of it. So to anyone that gets into a like, these are privileged people's problems, cat ejaculate and uh, (laughs) and my wife that had uh, cat shit or ejaculate in her hair and what's the difference between a cat ass smell and a human ass smell... Yes, there are more important issues in the world than those things, but not in our house right now. In our house right now, these are the things that make me laugh. Well, because we're trying things... to make you laugh and have a little relief from the bigger yeah. problems out there. So yeah. this isn't the space for that. This isn't the space for that. And I don't even need to comment because that was the first comment like that in in 98 episodes that we have done of this yeah. show. That was the first person that said something like that. But I, I just thought it was funny because I can see... Uh, that type of person being like, oh my God, they're fucking just talking about it's okay. So it made me laugh. Everybody has to say something sometimes. Sometimes. And I, and I think that uh, it is a serious issue, the fact that something is going on with the cat and you. <laughs> we don't know what it is. We don't understand what this smell is or why it's coming from his nether regions. <laughs> or why he then likes to lick it when he smells it on oh, me. Oh man, we are into some deep shit now. <laughs> <laughs> and and furthermore, most importantly, is I hope he doesn't keep doing this while your hair is blown out, or you'll just live with it for days at a time. Because I'm committed to my hair blowouts. Yeah. And those are the real issues that are important in this and world. And that's what we need so to worry about. So serious. And, and the fact that I don't know any... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we, uh... I'm not here to discuss the depressing stuff, folks. Hey, are you okay with promoting this incredible thing that you're doing on the elsewhere to those that are listening right now? Oh, yeah, sure. I would love you to do so. Oh, thanks. Because it's so fucking fun. Okay, friends. Many of you may know uh, because you're awesome and loyal and have seen it because we've just been promoting it on our Instagram. Um, yeah, my friend and I, my friend Heather and I started our own vodcast. Um, and you can find it on YouTube, um, the Jenna Elfman and Heather Dale show. And, uh, you can, if you want to just listen to it, you can listen to it wherever you listen to podcasts, but it's a vodcast. We film it and you can watch it on YouTube and, um, on Instagram, we are at Jenna and Heather. And, uh, it's more like the sisterhood vodcast where we talk about the stuff that I can't talk about with him. I doubt the word cat ejaculate is going to come up on your Heather yeah. and Jenna podcast. Yeah, no, Vodcast. we don't. We talk about the more important issues, folks. <laughs> ah! 
Um, yeah, well, we, uh, well, Heather and I go into some deep stuff, and we also talk about fun, lighthearted things. Whatever comes up, like girls do. Like girls do. Well, in one, in one, I would say stroke, but that's not really what I wanted to say. In many strokes, <laughs> not just one. <laughs> It's, in, in, in a few minutes, we'll... In a few know. rhythmic strokes, you guys get down to the business at hand. Um, I highly recommend it. It is an incredibly cute uh, vodcast, Thank and you. I think you guys are doing a great job. Thank you. We have um, a lot of fun, actually. I know you do. That's yeah. what makes it fun. All right. See you next time, guys. Hang in there. Every man's a shot, you